Hello again, and this time we're going to give you the works. Two works bands among the very best in the land who, one might say, got where they are by their own industry. As ever in this series, though, they don't have to labour to impress the adjudicators. No, the adjudicators have clocked off, and IMI Yorkshire Imperial and the GUS band have stayed on the shop floor just to entertain us. Join Yorkshire Imps for a start on their midnight sleigh ride. Midnight sleigh ride with musical director Ray Farr cracking the whip. And he should know his way through the snow, even in the dark, because he arranged it. We'll be uh, groping around a bit later on because we're off on an expedition, but let's stay a while on the beaten track, the well-worn path of romance. Lace Hank is at the ready as Alan Exley turns an old-fashioned love song into a cornet solo. Softly awakes my heart.
Ah, softly awakes my heart, sobbed Delilah, just before she robbed Samson of his hair and his strength. Now, both Yorkshire Imps and GUS have undergone changes of name. The Yorkshire Band were first known as Yorkshire Copperworks, while GUS used to be Munn and Felton. Usually, nobody likes change because it means going where we've never gone before. But this time, it's different, with a piece which took us where we'd never gone before. Specially composed by film music man Carl Davis, it's called Galaxies, an expedition for a band. And this was its first outing on television. <laughs>
An expedition which takes us to the stars and brings us back to Kettering and the GUS band. Not an anticlimax at all, really, because this band became world champions within only one year of being formed in 1933. They fanfare that achievement and all those which have followed it with the presto from Norwegian Rhapsody. Yes, and we're thinking of becoming naturalised Norwegians because we'll be back there in a minute with Grieg's view of the country. But first, a real bit of magic. Three minutes and four seconds of it, to be precise. That's just the time it'll take Brian Grant to play the magic trumpet on his cornet. It took far longer to reach his standard, of course, but on the way he did pick up the prestigious cornet prize during his training at the Royal Military School of Music. So, before we return to Scandinavia, Brian turns his cornet, as if by magic, into the magic trumpet.
and there's just time to remind you to write in, please, with your requests for any pieces you'd like us to repeat. We'll give an address to which to write at the end of the programme. And while we're on the subject of repeats, if you want to bask in just the sounds of good brass bands, well, most of the pieces we're playing in this series are available on records, and a lot more besides, all on a selection of best of brass records which are in the shops. In our next time, we'll bask in the sounds of Desford Colliery Doughty and Yorkshire Imperial. That'll be one of those changes we talked about earlier. Another metamorphosis now, though, the one by Hindemith. Bye for now.
Best of Brass is on Thursday at 5 o'clock here on 2. And here's that address to write to. Best of Brass, BBC Television Centre, Wood Lane, London, W. <laughs> Relax, we're here to enjoy ourselves. Remember, this is a series with nothing at all to prove, except the extreme pleasure one can get from quality brass bands playing good tunes. It's a sort of escapism set to music. With the adjudicators certainly packed away on holiday, Desford Colliery Doughty don't even wish they were here, as they send them a postcard from Mexico. Postcard from Mexico, in the unmistakable handwriting of musical director Howard Snell. 
And remember, please, I'd like a postcard from you telling me which pieces you'd like us to play again by way of an encore in some special programmes just before Easter. There'll be an address for you at the end of the programme. You don't have to be a music lover to fall for this next item, though. If you've an affection for Moggies, even, you'll purr as you reach for your postcards. It's that duet for two cats, written originally by Rossini, but in this version, Martin Winter and Chris Jeans almost make the fur fly. Pusses galore. Now, mention Ravel these days, and you'll like as not think of Bolero and Torval and Dean. Well, get them out of your mind and think of another double act which Ravel got together. Not Torval and Dean, but Daphnis and Chloe. Desford put them on ice with another Howard Snell arrangement.
Martin Winter bows out on behalf of Desford. Ray Farr ushers in tonight's other star band, IMI Yorkshire Imperial. Now, Ray introduced them to a lot of success as their musical director, and he, too, has that special talent to make a band sparkle with his own arrangements. See just what he did with Bach's Toccata.
a blockbuster after Bach. Now, if our music hasn't gone to your head by now, well, the next piece should, straight to the back of your eyes. It's that boozy portrait by Peter Skellen of a Yorkshire lad who went to Spain and got too much sun and sangria, especially sangria. It's called Torrimer Wakefield. <laughs> Jingle on the triangle and a jangle in your head. You may remember Peter Skellen himself playing that triangle in an earlier series. His hand was steady as a rock. Well, we'll just have one, or in this case two, for the road until next time. Yorkshire imps play us out with freedom and Slavonic rhapsody, and then they play their own encore. I look forward to our encore next time because it brings us to some of your requests, and there's a feast of five bands. Till then, good night. <laughs> Thank you.
And you have just five days to wait to hear these bands because the next Best of Brass is on Tuesday at 4.30 here on 2.
Hello again, and back we come by request this time with a reprise, a sort of the best of best of brass. We've had an avalanche of your letters asking for repeats of your favourite numbers. Thanks very much. There are so many that will be on the air with some more special programmes just before Easter. But to be going on with, here's a march which you've clamoured to hear again, and I don't blame you. Desford Colliery Doughty follow it with a popular song, but that march says it all about the brass movement, the president. <laughs> popular song and a popular program we have a festival of five bands all together but we keep Desford on the bandstand for quite a while longer and tickled pink they are too because it falls to their lot to accompany one of the most glamorous young ladies ever to blow her own euphonium 
Wendy Picton blew it well enough to win the British Youth Solo Championship three years running. We have a double dose of her as well, because Wendy's going hunting Paganini, lucky chap, with La Chasse, but first to the world of opera, and in particular Puccini's Tosca. Wendy Picton plays when the stars were brightly shining. The <laughs> 
Wendy Picton and her euphonium, a remarkable partnership. The partnership between musical director Howard Snell and Desford was a remarkable one too. You've obviously noticed how successful it was because you've asked to hear a lot of their set pieces again. Here's one of them, the Symphonic Suite from West Side Story. <laughs> Thank you. 
Desford telling a West Side story to some tune. When we've sorted out all your mail, I'll be able to put some names to the request, so please make sure your signature is readable on your postcards. Now to a change of band and, incidentally, a change of name. When we recorded these programmes, it was Foden OTS, and now it's Britannia Building Society Foden, because there's been a change of sponsorship. That's just a pointer to the wheeling and dealing that goes on in the brass band world these days as bands struggle to survive or even to prosper. The music has to be good, but so does the money. Anyway, a band by any other name. The band is descended from the great Foden Motorworks band, and that's Bliss, Sir Arthur Bliss, no less. Foden's move the Red Bishop from his checkmate. Foden OTS, and yes, you noticed, Howard Snell conducting, wearing his other hat and waving his other baton. Well, we wave him goodbye for today and welcome another very famous figure in the middle of a band. This man has a flair which has pulled off many a major championship with many a major band. He's a major too, Peter Parks. He conducts the Ever Ready Band now in Cherepnine's Fanfare. <laughs>
fanfare by Tiretnin, showing that they do things a bit differently in Russia. They uh, do things differently in Wales too, where there's a champion band of Wales and also the title Welsh Regional Champions, one of those territorial quirks in brass banding. Anyway, the Lewis Merthyr Band as champion band of Wales draw the line for us as clearly as the boundary between America and Canada, the 49th parallel. the 49th parallel, and we draw the line there. Thanks again for all your requests asking us to repeat your favourite items. We'll sort them out and include most of them in the next series just before Easter. And it's not yet too late. We'll give an address to which to write at the end of the programme. And while we're on the subject of repeats, if you do want to bask in just the sounds of good brass bands, well, most of the pieces we're playing in this series are available on records and a lot more besides, all on a selection of best of brass records which are in the shops. But for CWS Glasgow, the carnival isn't quite over. Goodbye from us. <laughs>
like a request played in the next series, the address to write to is Best of Brass, BBC Television Centre, Wood Lane, London, W12 7RJ. count there were over 4,000 brass bands in Britain. Eight of them are with us, the champions of Scotland, Wales and all the regions of England, so it's got to be the best of brass again. And if you need any more proof that we're back again and very glad to be back again with the very best of brass music, well our select eight are bound for London for this year's national championship finals and the winning band can pick up a £1,500 first prize here in Derby, so that should pay their bus fare at any rate to London from the assembly rooms here. Marking cards, if not punching tickets, there's Colonel Trevor Sharp. And he's joined by a new adjudicator making his first trip this year, the well-known orchestral conductor, Bernard Keith. Well, they decide the winning bands, you, the viewer, decide the winning soloist. And we'll be telling you how to do that later on in the series. Anyway, this is the bus queue. Take your seats tonight as the Corey Band, the Welsh champions, try to beat Leyland vehicles. Next week, though, it's Whitburn Borough, the pride of Scotland and last year's runners-up, up against Clacton-on-Sea Cooperative, representing London and Southern Region. After that, Desford Colliery Doughty, the band of the moment from the Midlands, meet Ever Ready, and as Northern champions, they've been ever-present in every series. And the last of the first rounds features the West of England champions, Camborne Town, against Carlton Main Frickley Colliery, representing the might of Yorkshire. There is just one little snag. I don't get it all my own way with my lads from the Northwest. Oh, no. Every band, as usual, has its own travelling supporter. And here, trying to find something good to say about Corey, is Jerry Monty from BBC Wales. Well, that's not going to be difficult, Gerald. <laughs> thanks for those few kind words. And thanks once again for the honour of introducing Wales' premier band, the Corey, who've travelled here from the Ronda with just one thing in mind, and that's to win. Judge for yourselves now with their first piece, conductor Denzel Stevens' arrangement of the traditional French folk song, Frère Jacques. And that's just for starters. The Corey Band goes right back to the early days of banding, to the 1880s. In fact, they'll be celebrating their centenary in just two years' time. When they come together twice a week for rehearsals, and again most Saturdays for a concert or a competition, 
they like to keep their repertoire as wide and varied as possible. Here's one of their very latest additions from the smash hit musical Barnum, Cy Coleman's Come Follow the Band. <laughs> Follow the band. Well, over the years, the Corey bands won, quite simply, just about everything there is to win. The British National Championships, the European title, and both the Granada and BBC Band of the Year awards. And this year, they've now got their sights firmly fixed on the best of brass, especially after being so narrowly pipped in last year's first round by the old enemy, GUS, who then went on to win. So at least we had the consolation of being beaten by the best. And the Corey Band is now very much in a winning mood this year, having already chalked up a second in the Granada at Warrington, and they took first place at Telford recently. Now, in both those events, Jim Davis won top marks with splendid solo cornet performances. And here he is now with Denzel Stevens' arrangement of the Nun's Chorus from Strauss's Casanova.
Jim Davis from Anis here from the with the Nuns Chorus. I said earlier that the Cory band always likes to keep the repertoire varied. And to close now, we move from Strauss to Shostakovich, which you must admit is quite a contrast. But that's just the very kind of challenge the Cory band loves. For their final piece, here's a Fugato, the 9th of January from Symphony No. 11 by Shostakovich. <laughs> Oh, the 9th of January, it must have been a stormy day. Well, Denzel Stevens arranged every quarry item. Let's see if we can now arrange a victory for Leyland Vehicles from my patch in the Northwest. They've already arranged for themselves one of the most sensational promotions in the history of banding because they hit the top as Northwest champions only three years after being reformed down in the third section. It was a stylish military advance, a march with just a touch of steady boys steady, just like the Army of the Nile.
Well, leading that army of the Nile is Leyland's musical director, Richard Evans. He's the man who was hired by Leyland Vehicles to create a winning band against a deadline. Provide a championship band in three years. Well, under very great pressure, he pulled it off. And perhaps he's dedicating the next piece to his long-suffering wife, Sylvia. Like all women in banding, she puts up with a lot of hassle and a lot of absence. It's from Delib's ballet, Sylvia, The Dance of the Huntresses. The dance of the huntresses and when Leyland are not hunting trophies and they have won half a dozen major prizes in the last three years well they're swanning around the world promoting the sale of buses and trucks they've swanned it out as far as Japan so far where they gave nine concerts in nine cities in a fortnight so it's not always a swan but Brian Crooks's euphonium solo is the one by Sanson <laughs>
That was Brian Crook swanning around the upper registers in very calm waters. Now, though, to make a final splash, Leyland throw Tchaikovsky into the pool. One of their trademarks is their stylish, bright sound, and it can get pretty overpowering in a rabble riser like the one to come. Brace yourselves, then, for nationalistic fervour and Northwest confidence in Marsh Slav. Well, Northwest confidence or Welsh fervour? Trevor Sharp, which wins the day? Um, well, for my money, I came out of that round feeling that there was something not quite there that I, I would have liked to have heard. Um, and I, I didn't seem really to find a piece that made me, in fact, stop writing. No, Bernard, what, what did you think? 
Yes, I mean, I come to this always absolutely staggered by the technique of a brass band. And to hear these two splendid bands playing with such confidence, elaborate rhythms, with such power and tone. But I want from music atmosphere. I want to feel a sort of shiver down my back. And I didn't get that today. I just got the impression of fabulous technique and fabulous mm. playing. Can we get yes. some specific um, yes. Well, I, th I thought uh, the Cory Band program first, they got the way quite nice and, uh, nice and bright and fairly dark. It was a bit lumpy here and there, but it had plenty of impetus, nice happy tune, a very pleasant arrangement. Um, I didn't think the same about um, Come Follow the Band. It needed a bit more um, warmth, really, Bernard. Yes, it? a kind of flamboyance, I think. The, the, the power was there. But I think even a piece like that, just like a Beethoven symphony, has got to be paced with a little extra dynamic variation here leading up to a point, and it's got to be presented in that way. But we I were quite, quite happy about the cornet solo. Wasn't we? Yes, That's we were. Very, very yes, very yes. Nice. Yes. nice accompaniment. Yes. We're all dying to hear yeah. what you've got to say about the Shostakovich, actually. What yes. do you think about that? Well, you know what it is. It is an <laughs> you said it was a stormy day. It is crowds of people rushing on yes. to... A, a, it's a revolutionary yes, mob. Yeah. And uh, I think... The, the arrangement is excellent, and the performance, I thought, in many ways, was thrilling. I thought this was an excellent demonstration of this band's best qualities. Right, can we get on yeah. to some of the best qualities, if you see good qualities, in the Leyland performance? The Leyland band, I thought, offered quite a nice range. They started off with a military band march. I think I might have liked to have heard a contest march. Um, the uh, Delib, uh, tempo not quite right, tempo not quite right in the march, but. Um, it was um, a nice, pleasant sound, some good ensemble playing there. When they got down to the quieter textures, pump palm sounded very, very nice. Some excitement. Yeah. Yes. So yeah they're lady hunters, remember? I think, I was thinking, yeah. probably, are they riding side saddles? Because yeah. <laughs> I must have felt that this perhaps was a little fast. I think you, you made a point about the soloist, Bernard. About the, oh, yes. Uh, in, in the solo, yes. This, uh, firstly, I felt the tempo was rather slow. And also, he tended to prolong the, the notes at the ends of phrases, which yeah. I think made things rather difficult. Well, Lovely well, sound, but yeah. it was overall... And what about that big finish from Leila and the, the Tchaikovsky? Well, a, a, again, a splendid sound. But you see, I want, in the opening of that, it says to be played like a funeral march. And that first theme must be like a cry of pain from a people who've just been oppressed or defeated, contrasting with the exciting victory march which comes later. I just didn't feel the pain. The beautiful sound, beautifully played, precise, excellent ensemble. Yes, and you had to get a move on at the end, didn't yes. you? Because they really did take it with a tremendous <laughs> tempo. Yeah. It was well, well, very nice playing at the oh, end. Yeah. We're about to hear a cry of pain from the losers tonight. <laughs> But before you give us the result, just tell us what has tipped the balance in your mind. Well, from what we said at the beginning, really, you can only judge on what you hear. And when one is looking for as many facets of musicianship as possible, the texture, the colours, the contrast, the style and the phrasing. And I think they will reflect in the marks yeah. of, you'd like to hear yeah. them from yeah. You'd better give them to yes, us now. Right. <laughs> well, these were two very good bands, very close, and we decided that Corey should have 86 and Leyland 88. So, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, our two bands, Leyland, are our first band through. Next week, Whitburn Borough from Scotland, last year's runners-up, take on newcomers from Clacton-on-Sea. It'll be more Best of Brass. See you then. Good night now. <laughs> Thank you.
to you again, and it's a night of contrast in Best of Brass this week. One band hewn out of the coal of a mining town way back in, in 1870, the other built on the sand of a seaside resort in the middle of this century. Whitburn Burraban, the Scottish champions who used to be known as Whitburn Miners Welfare, are about to take on a band from the other end of the country, Clacton on Sea Cooperative, and they do a lot for the welfare of holidaymakers down in Essex. It was uh, Whitburn Borough, you may remember, who did a sort of Bonnie Prince Charlie down here last year, and they advanced as far as the assembly rooms in Derby, being beaten to the crown narrowly in the final. Well, Clacton-on-Sea, who are with us for the first time as London and Southern Counties champions, are intent on stemming the invasion on the border this year. Both armies line up on the same sort of terrain, around 12 minutes of music, each with their own choice of program. And at the end of hostilities, well, our adjudicators declare who's won the day. Colonel Trevor Sharp, formerly director of music at the Royal Military School of Music, and his civilian orchestral colleague, Bernard Keefe. Well, individual deeds of valor, in other words, the solos, they're left to everybody at home to vote on. So please keep your ears and your eyes open. Now, all our bands come with their own general to marshal them, of course. So here, rallying his troops, is Ken Bruce from BBC Scotland. Thank you, Gerald. A pleasure to be here. And uh, yes, as you said, Whitburn were just pipped at the post last year. This year, well, if I were a betting man, which being Scottish, of course I'm not, I'd be putting all my tram tokens on Whitburn for the top place this time. However, reputations don't win prizes. Playing does. So let's get started. And what better way to start than with a march? Perhaps the most exciting sound to come out of a brass band. And this, one of the best. Under their director of music, Major Peter Parks, the Whitburn Borough Band with Gough Richards, the Jaguar. <laughs> Well, now for our solo, and if you watch the 1981 series, you'll know that this year's soloists have a great deal to follow. But we at Whitburn can claim the top soloist from last year, 19-year-old Martin Wilson, a fine trombonist who's now studying on a scholarship at the Royal College of Music in London, but who's more than happy to make the journeys north to play with the Whitburn band. And I'm pleased to say he's with us again tonight. The piece is more usually a violin solo, something you may have been used to seeing was it Henry Sizel perform Leaping Up and Down? However, tonight, keeping relatively stable throughout, Martin Wilson with Monty's Chadash. <laughs> Thank 
Fleet of lip, I think, is the term for that. Now, I said earlier that Whitburn were finalists in last year's Best of Brass. Well, they haven't been resting on the laurels since then. They come to Derby, having already this year won the Dunfermline Carnegie contest and having come out top in the inaugural series of the BBC Scotland television brass band contest, Fanfare. So a band, dare I say it, on a winning streak, whether playing full-blooded marches or something a little gentler, more sensitive. And it's to such a piece of music that we turn now. One with strong French influences, but from the pen of that great British man of brass, Gough Richards. His pastoral. <laughs>
Now, I think it's fair to say that in personality terms, Whitburn are one of the livelier bands around. And this natural exuberance within the discipline of a brass band, I believe, puts an exciting edge into their playing, which marks them out from other bands. It's something I think you'll be aware of in their final offering tonight. Major Peter Parks conducts the Whitburn Borough Band in the scherzo from Malcolm Arnold's Fantasy for Brass Band. <laughs> Wow, so Whitburn fired the first shot in a campaign which they hope will bring even more victories than last year. They're not going to scare off Clacton easily, though, because they know what it's like to be under fire. After all, they do have to keep on changing their programmes all the time to keep those holidaymakers happy. And their general, John Dunn, always keeps his cool when the flak flies on his daily radio programme. Are you ready for this battle? Though? Indeed we are, sir. Gerald, thank you very much indeed. Now, there's a dastardly and dangerous rumour around that there are no good bands in the southeast of England. A rumour put about, may I say, by bands who are not in the southeast of England in fear of competition. We shall see. Now, this is a fairly young band, but they've risen fast through the ranks in the last five years, up from the second section to the championship section, and they're now the champions of London and the southeast. And the man who steered them to this success is on the rostrum this evening. That's their musical director, Robert Howard. And they're going to open their programme with a brand new piece from America by Stephen Buller, and it's called A Festive Prelude. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, as Gerald said, the Clacton Band does play for the holidaymakers. In fact, they give about 12 concerts during the season. So not only do they have to keep their programme fresh, they also have to keep in touch with the pop scene. Which brings us on to our solo spot, and music by that man of many hits, Neil Sadaka. Now, this is going to be a family affair because it'll be played for us by the son of the conductor and the son-in-law of the band's secretary. And while you work that out, listen to Stephen Howard playing Solitaire. Beautiful Stephen Howard playing solitaire. 
Well, now something very English, although in fact it's written by an Australian whose centenary we're celebrating this year, the incredible Percy Granger. Incredible he was. Uh, he used to sport an Afro haircut, which at the turn of the century was quite something. And uh, he also wore suits made of toweling so that he could wash them because he thought that conventional suits were most unhygienic. However, it was he who gave us the famous shepherd's hay. Shepherd's hay, and if you'd like to know, a hay is or was a round dance. In fact, Dr. Johnson said it was named after the contented peasants who danced round their haycocks, which is ingenious if not very likely. Well, now, finally, a gallop, and one of the real band favourites. Malcolm Arnold wrote two little suites for brass band, and this is the gallop from number two. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, Malcolm Arnold pieces and both performances. Let's see which went down best. Bernard Keefe. Well, it was very interesting to hear the attack of these two bands because the Whitper Borough Band has an attack, I felt it was rather like a claymore hitting you between the eyes, absolutely electrifying. And of course, the impact of this is tremendous. But on the other hand, uh, Clacton, although it didn't have quite that kind of, had its own sound and its own way of playing, was very attractive. So we had here two quite distinct ways of playing, which each in themselves was, was something to praise. Obviously, the, the uh, power of the Whitba Band told tremendously in their playing of the uh, Arnold Fantasy, and also in uh, Jaguar, which again had uh, this marvelous rhythm, and also control of accentuation. But I don't know what uh, my colleague here feels, but uh, I felt that what we heard this week was a remarkable variety of musical expression, yes. wasn't it? I, I think I'm feeling rather smug, Bernard, actually, because um, remember we, we were rather doer last week yes. and we were talking about what we were looking for. Yes. Uh, and we found it today week, in both, yes. both bands. Yes. Both very attractive playing. There was a much more precise style um, in the projection of dynamics, of some very good structural dynamics and rhythms that came across it very well in, in all the pieces. Even in the solos, we had some marvellous facilitation for the trombone. Let's go on to the quieter one, yes. the Shepherd's Hay yes. and yes. Pastoral. Mm. What mm. did you think? I rather like that arrangement, uh, Neil Risson's arrangement of Shepherd's Hay. A lot of kind of filigree harm harmony and, uh, yes. and rhythms in there, which came, came through very well. A bit lumpy at the beginning. It sounds as though it's a fairly close balance in your minds, gentlemen. Before you tell us the result, the favourite one of mine, really. What's tipped the, the, the result, the way it's gone? Well, um, well, shall I say, well, in my opinion, the, mm. the control of accentuation to bring out not only the rhythm of the fast, loud pieces, but also of the softer pieces. There was a control of that kind of rhythmic structure in one band that was not quite so perfect in the other. Yes, well, yes, speak yes, up yes, now yes. and let's hear the <laughs> result. Come on, Trevor. Well, two, I, I thought they're two variable players, and if I am, am allowed to say these two bands who have emerged upon the scene in the last three or four years uh, and made a tremendous in, uh, impact on the brass band world. They've got people thinking. Indeed. They Make an impact it. on yeah. us now well, with, the, with the result. Well, we gave uh, Whitburn for quite a dynamic program. We gave them 89 marks, and for a very excellent program, we gave Clacton 87. So that's down then to Whitburn to meet Leyland Vehicles in the very first semi-final. Next week's Best of Brass, though, comes from Desford Colliery Doughty in the Midlands and Ever Ready, the Northern Champions. Do join us then. Good night. Challenging the old stager on Best of Brass this week. All the D's for a start. Debut day for Desford Colliery Doughty against all the E's, ever ready, the ever present. But those newcomers, Desford Colliery, they're very much the Midlands band of the moment, having beaten GUS to the regional championships. And remember, Gus have won our title twice. Ever ready, of course, well, they know just where their instruments fit on this stage. They're the only band ever to appear in all five Best of Brass series. Well, who stays around longest this year is up, as usual, to our adjudicators. Colonel Trevor Sharp, formerly in charge of music at the Royal Military School of Music, and with him, comparative new boy Bernard Keith, who's a professor at Trinity College, London. Don't forget, though, to keep a special lookout yourselves for the soloists, because we'll be asking viewers to vote on them later in the series. And you don't need any blandishments from me to keep a special eye on the supporter who's travelled with Desford Colliery, because it's Kay Alexander from BBC Midlands. 
It's a bit strange not having Gus with you this year. Well, it does feel a bit strange, Gerald, but I've got nothing to complain about with this band. They're top in the Midlands, of course, this year, and have just won the Granada Band of the Year competition, too. They were formed about 80 years ago when brass bands were literally booming in the north and the Midlands were determined to get in on the act. But it was only after the Second World War when their first instruments, bought in 1913, looked a bit shell-shocked, that they took up the offer of a grant from the Coal Industry Social Welfare Organization, got some new instruments and a new name. They became the Desford Colliery Doughty Band. And most of the players today are miners. Their conductor, Howard Snell, has been with them for four years and has brought with him the experience of being a former principal trumpet in the London Symphony Orchestra, as well as conducting his own Wren Orchestra. Well, to start their programme, they're going to play Howard Snell's own arrangement of Massenet's ballet music, Le Cid. <laughs> The Seed by Massenet. Well, from ballet music to very much a band piece, in fact composed by the famous American cornetist Herbert Clark when he was on a visit to this country with Sousa's band in 1901. It's called Sounds from the Hudson and is our solo spot for tonight. 
The man braving this virtuoso cornet piece is a minor, and he's also a former national champion. Kevin Dye. <laughs> One of the lighter pieces of music in the brass band repertoire. Its composer is Ray Premru, who's the bass trombonist with the Philip Jones Brass Ensemble and a composer of international repute. It's called simply Watch Your Step.
well, that was Desford watching their step. And under different circumstances, so would the performers in our finale tonight, because it's ballet music again. One of those wild Russian dances composed by Kachaturian for his ballet, Gayane. So here is Howard Snell to conduct the Desford Colliery Doughty Band in Lezhjinka. <laughs> Don't forget that every band picks its own programme to last around 12 minutes, and one of the big secrets of, of success in this competition is to present what the players regard, at any rate, as an irresistible mixture. Well, the Northern Champions have their background, like Desford, in mining, so they're perhaps paying tribute to that later on with a piece called Black Note Fantasy. And you'll also recognise their man in the middle as Peter Parks, who took Whitburn to victory last week. But here, to reveal the rest of Everready's plans, is that Geordie from Pebble Mill, Marion Foster. <laughs> Thank you, George. Actually, it's apt in a way that we should be competing with a colliery band because Everready began its career as the well-known band of the Craghead Colliery in County Durham almost 100 years ago. So it's ready, ever ready, to put up a good challenge tonight, and it starts with a rousing fanfare that was specially written for a grand opening ceremony at the Vienna Rathaus in 1935. Fest Music.
stately fanfare, Fest Music by Richard Strauss. Well, ever ready, continue with a piece everyone will recognize. For anyone who's ever been near a piano, however ham fisted, always ends up playing one of two pieces. And this is the one that can be played by one finger on each hand and introduces all the black notes. Brian Tate, an electrician with Ever Ready, Wilf Biddell, a Durham service manager, and Jim Shepherd, who's uh, well known for his own group, the Versatile Brass. Well, let's see how versatile they all are with black note fantasy. <laughs> amazing black note fantasy, usually played by the black hand gang in my family. Although when I was a child, we called it, oh, can you wash a sailor's shirt? Well, over the years, the trio have all appeared in this competition as soloists. And this year, the tenor horn solo features another face you may remember, David Dye. Tonight, as soloist, he's chosen Derek Ashmore's arrangement of the song that was a big hit for the Brazilian uh, singer-songwriter, Morris Albert, in 1975, and for many other stars since then, feeling.
David Dye, the soloist in that beautiful interpretation of feelings. But if you all slipped into a starry-eyed reverie during that magical ballad, the Ever Ready Band will certainly wake you up again with their final piece, Star Wars. <laughs> 